right, so let's go. Yo, Ange, it's on you. <laughs> you started it already? Yeah, man. Wait, wait. This ain't the warm up. Damn. I thought Ange, this was you the still, warm up. This is week three. You still need to warm up, dog. Son, we've been warming up to test the levels, son. Nah, now you're man. just gonna throw me in the fire like that, dog. It's week three. You you supposed to understand how things work by now, man. Yo, <laughs> Sky. Yo, what up? Yo, welcome to the Filthy Rag Show. Oh, we're here man. with my two disciples. Here we go. Here we go. You know, yo, See, that's you, that's how heart. we're going to start it every week. That's, that's the heart. That's exactly what this that's is. That's when the heart comes out. I appreciate y'all helping me out getting this uh, podcast started. It's all good, though. Ah, damn. So, who God. was that? Yeah, I'm about to start over. Because <laughs> he, <hit. laughs> he banged the mic. I'm about to start this over. Dog. I'm confused right now, man. I don't About even know what, what we're doing. Well, you didn't know we started? Yeah. Yo, dog. Yeah, Marcus is right, dog. We got to start it over? Nah, we ain't starting nothing over, B. It's been three weeks, B. Yo, this is live. Let's go. Dog, you be th- That's what it is. You threw him in the fire and he wasn't ready. That's he right. had everything. You know what it is? He had everything ready today. <laughs> 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 and he wasn't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the first two weeks we did a five to ten minute warm up to test test the levels. Now all of a sudden we skipping it. So how many warm ups you need, Ange? <laughs> oh man, you'll be just talking to the mic. All right, bro. That's I'll yo. I'm telling you, he was ready. Look, yo, look at his. Yo, he was ready for everything <laughs> today, but he wasn't ready for you to turn that mic on. And that's what he's got <laughs> asking for a warm up. You caught him off guard. Yo, my man got yo everything is perfect, but he wasn't ready for. <laughs> got the salsa. I got the mocha double shots. Yeah, he yeah, got yeah. the labby open. Yo. He got the he got the scriptures and the labby. I got the new. He got the mo- yo. Ash, hopefully, you stay up for the whole. Nah, the he whole nah, podcast. Yeah, I think he. Yo. I think he. He's ready. You took I mean, we get like a three hour late started in. Uh, we starting later than usual. Three hours. So. It's usually it's two. You took your nap earlier, man. Nah. <laughs> I ain't taking a nap today, bro. Right. I just want you to stay up past 45. All right. I'll, I'll give you 50, 55. I think he'll make it past It's 45. a short chapter, so we good. He'll make it past Who's, who's going to talk to the people? Who's going to talk to the people? The Lord, hopefully. All right. Yeah, Yo, Mike, how you doing, for? man? Had a long day. Mm. Oh, man. Tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> the devil's a liar. Yo, and that's what it is, man. I... Yo, Satan's a hater, B. Mm. Yo, dog, this guy, man, he ain't got nothing better to do. Hey, what happened? What His happened? whole life. I'm going to get to it, but first I got to let everybody know Satan's a hater, B. Word. Like, he ain't got nothing better to do. He's a sucker. Like, he sits there all day and night, and like the, like the word says, that he, like the word says, he accuses the brethren day and night mm. before the, because he has nothing better to do. Dog, his whole life is just mischief. <laughs> his whole life. Damn. Have you have you ever met somebody whose whole life is? Yeah, you know, the scripture says he's he he he's a murderer. Dog, he's a liar. Like yo, the Lord said there is no truth in him. Like just try to just try to find somebody with a character like that. It's, you'll never see it. Like there's only Satan. He's on another level. But yo, what the God do to you, man? Yo. So today, mm, get to the point. Son. So today, yo, we only got two hours. Yeah, relax. Look at you, you, yo, B. He's hyped. You see, he, 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 yo, he wants his turn. Yo, B. He, he, That's why. You know why? Because he was already, and you caught him off guard. You messed up everything. Yo. You messed up everything. So, nah, Andrew's waiting on his turn. Nah, I don't even need a turn today, man. <laughs> yo, so <laughs> I'm, riding, I'm riding my bike, coming from um. My dentist appointment. I'm all excited about the show. Can't can't wait to get home and get everything ready so we could do the show. And then my pedal comes off. My pedal <laughs> falls off. And mind you, it's pouring rain. And I'm stuck there in the rain. Can't ride. And shout out to Angelo because I called him. Good brother Ange. Good brother Ange. I called him. And Andrew's like, whatever, man, where you at? He hopped in the whip. And he got there pretty quick. 
Like he got there like yeah, my boy was in the rain, son. I yeah. had to speed over there. Yeah, he hit me with an ETA like the Uber. <laughs> he was like, yo, <laughs> yo, soon as <laughs> soon as he got in the car, he said twenty two minutes. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Word up. And he got there in twenty two minutes. Son. So, you know what I mean? Shout out to Angie Kane. Yo, Angie, um, if I had a clapping special effects, I would have hit it for yeah. you. Right oh, yeah? yeah. Okay. The crowd just Ange. cheering and roaring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, he deserves it today, man. He got he, he came in, put my bike in the, um in his truck, and you know, we, we, we got here. But, you know, Satan, you know, we've been getting some good feedback from the show, um, <clears throat> just from our family and our friends. So, you know, it's... it's to a uh, vote of confidence, you know, just excited mm-hmm. to do the show. And yep. and um, the past week, I've just been riding, you know, just riding the bike and getting in a good groove on riding. i just been enjoying it, and I was just telling my boy today, like, yo, I'm really starting to, like, you know, get en- enjoy riding. And just he hit me with two, two birds with one stone, man. On the day of the podcast, my bike falls apart in the rain. Mm. So, Damn. So at the end up. of the so at the end of the day, you know. But we, we if I we if I had an all special oh <laughs> if I had an all special effects button, I'd hit it for you, Mike. Mm. But I don't. <laughs> Cause you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's talk about that. You don't really care. Nah, you don't care about nah. nobody. Just get that pedal fixed, man. Yeah. Man. I gotta get my bike fixed too, man. I gotta hit the streets on my bike. Yo, Ange. Yo. What's up with you, man? Chilling, bro. You good? I'm good money. I'm yeah, ready to go. How's, how's your weekend, ma? Weekend was good, man. Went out on the boardwalk Friday to spread the gospel. That's what's up. It was dope, son. It's always a good uh, feeling to go out there, spread the yeah, word. There you, wasn't that many heads out there, but... You want the alley? What? You want the alley? Want the alley? The, what, what, hap- what happened filthy at the boardwalk? <laughs> let, let's talk ah, about... Chill, let, bro. Listen, let's, <laughs> we know we got to get to filthy rags, baby. Yo, you got like your boardwalk spreading the gospel. Go- you want the alley, yeah. is, right? <laughs> listen, man. God... Just teaching me lessons, man. Oh, All day. Man. That pride you mentioned, bro. It can yo, it can creep in real quick. Oh, the the, the prayer before this? Yeah, that oh. pride you mentioned. So So give us an example what you mean. So your boy was out there giving the gospel. Mm-hmm. And the dude that I was yo, speaking yo, wait, to. Hold on, hold on. Which which boardwalk? Coney Island boardwalk, man. Brooklyn in the house, boy. Yo, man. World famous. World famous. Okay. So we we go out there on Friday night. Shout out to John Nukatola who holds it down um, on the on the sketchboard. But yeah, we was giving the gospel, and this one cat looked at me and he was like, "Yo, I, I, yo, I yo, recognize wait, your wait, face." Wait, 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 wait. You gotta tell the story right. That's not how you told the story before. How, yo, how was he looking at you? Yo, so it was him and his boy. I was looking at his boy talking to these dudes about the Lord, and he was mean mugging me. I right, he was you. grilling me, and Mama Dukes was there, and she was noticing that. So you know, my mom's a G. She was, she was, she was about, she was about to, to pop off. Oh, she about to pop off, wow. son. She a gangster, son. Shout she out. loved the Lord with all her heart, Shout but Miss Esther don't play. Oh, I love Miss Esther. She was Shout like, "Yo, why this dude grilling my son like that?" So then mm-hmm. I looked at him. He stopped me mid sentence, and I was like, "Oh, here we go, another dude that don't want to hear the gospel." And he was like, "Yo." I recognize your face from Facebook. You be out there putting those uh, raps on and, you know. So I was like, what? It caught me off guard because, you know, the last couple months I've been throwing a little uh, filthiness out there with some (laughs) fake hip hop. I'm a fake rapper, man. When the Lord give me words, I switch up different songs. And so he recognized it and he he recognized me. And for a minute there, I felt big time. I had to, yo, I had to calm down because my head got big. So I had to pray about that. But yeah, man, I spent a little $40 to get the <laughs> that $40 uh, went $40 along. To, yo, to promote. That was the, the best $40 song, spent son. this year. Word. Dog. Yo, so that that's, $40 got you a, a I notice. Ain't, I ain't even ashamed to say that I so got a So you ain't signed no autographs? Nah, no autographs yet, All man. Right. You, ain't, you ain't tell them to yo, hit you on the, the, the Facebook? Nah, I think he um I he, think he follows me. He follows you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so. Filthy but, rags. Yo, Angie's up. Rags, filthy bro. rags. Angie is up. Yo, filthy rags is here, dog. Look at, he happy. Look at him. Yeah, like that. Oh, buddy. Nah. <laughs> All glory goes to Jesus hey, Christ. Right. Nice way to clean it up. It sounds good. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Hey man. All glory goes to God. Yeah, man. That so, was good. That was good. Oh, we we back. Week three. <clears throat> 
Mm. John chapter John two. Chapter two. All right. About to set it off. Yeah, man. Yeah, I, I was I was excited, man. I was looking forward to this uh, study, too. Um. Yeah. Should be fun. Yeah, man. The book is dope, and just you know the miracles. You know, reading and it's, there's a difference, man, between reading the word and just studying it. And you know, lately the Lord has me in a season where I've been able to study the word, and it's just so much more edifying uh, when you're studying and instead of just reading. So, if anybody's out there, just you know, try to study the word. Look up different commentaries. Listen to different, you know, men of God. You know, teaching the word, and you'll be blessed. Amen. So, Ange, you want to do the honors? Yes, sir. Where we at? So, verse 1, where you want me to stop, bro? You want me to go all the way to uh, 10? Yeah. Let's do 1 to 10. Here we go. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim, And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn out the water knew, the master of the feast called the bridegroom. And he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine. And when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior, you have kept the good wine until now. Yeah. Mm. I like I like you know, I, I read this a couple of times over the weekend and I like the story. And there's a lot in there too. So I think we should take our time to kind of dissect it and just go through it. So John kinda sets the time, right? So that's you know, on the third day. So that's the third day after uh Jesus saw Nathaniel. And he saw Nathaniel on the fourth day. So this is actually the seventh day. Mm. So we're seeing this um, week theme um, with John. And when you go back, you know, John kind of opened up um, this book with, in the beginning, referencing Genesis, creation, creation week. So, it, you know, it has this this kind of theme. Um with mm. the the first week things that are happening in the first week mm-hmm. so um so what are we looking at man where what's the scene let's let's paint this out let's describe <coughs> it let's get into it a wedding yo mm. mike didn't you go to like 25 weddings chill <laughs> chill i love weddings dog listen yo his <laughs> envelope be light i, was, I don't know why yo, mike is a wedding crasher back. dog well, you a hater dog Son, my his env- envelope be light no, my envelope don't <laughs> invite him to your wedding please don't do that <laughs> yeah. why would you do that dog my envelope's don't it'll be, be mike's the wedding crasher dog no nah, i'm not the wedding crasher. So every other week he had a wedding to go to now nah, i love weddings man and you know reading this just it, it lets you know that you know jesus um he was invited and I just think about, you know, how many people have weddings and do they invite Jesus to their wedding? That's a great point. You know, mm. is Jesus is is Jesus a guest at your wedding? And um, word up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, actually, I, I was I was just looking at the divorce rate in the U.S. And it's like 40 to 50 yep. percent divorce rate. Crazy. That's because you ain't bring Jesus to your wedding. Yeah, man. I mean, I mean, there's a lot of happily married people who are not saved, you know, and um, they've been married for years. But um, just 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 here, you know, Jesus being inviting, being invited to the wedding. You see, you know, he performed his first miracle at the wedding and. You start to think about why would he perform his first miracle at a wedding. But 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 look at this. 
Because I usually glance, you know, I read this and I glance over it. Mm-hmm. Jesus got invited to a wedding and he went. Yep. When you think about a wedding, what do you think about? Dancing. Celebration. Good times. Food. Right? Food. Family. Family. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we're Smash talking about uh, joy, love. this is a, a Jewish wedding. Yeah. You know, and um, ancient Jewish culture. The wedding would last like what five days or a week of celebration. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, you know, right, right. it wasn't six hours like yeah. mm-hmm. you know Western I culture. Mean, yeah, but I mean most. Um, I think most Eastern cu- cultures they they celebrate like in India and all that. Right, they celebrate. This is like yeah. a, a, the weddings last a few days. I'm not sure of the exact number, but the wedding lasts a few days. Yeah. But Jesus. You know, I never really thought about that. Like Jesus getting an invitation, and he's like, oh, "Yeah, let's go." You yeah. know, I'm gonna bring six of my boys with me because mm. it's it's six right now, right? right? Mm-hmm. And contrast that to what was the last prophet we read about? John the Baptist. John the Baptist. What was John the Baptist doing? He was in the wilderness. Dude, he was in the wilderness, doly. <laughs> he was he was a uh, uh, you know yeah he was reclusive. He wasn't around people. He had no friends like Mike. <laughs> so I don't know how Mike get him. He, Mike got no friends and his envelopes be light. I don't know right. how they invite him to the Yo, weddings. my man is on me. And, you, and I shouted him out it's earlier. Your, it's your turn. I, yeah, yeah. I shouted him out earlier. Chill, but bro. But um, nah, just, you know, just seeing that. Because like, like I said, man, I love weddings. And, you know, before I was saved, it was all about the reception. You know, that's all I cared about. You know what I mean? The open B the open <laughs> the open bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? All the food. And um And and right? Somebody say, Yo, I went to a wedding, blah blah blah. What do you say? Yo, how's the how was the first thing? The food? First yep. thing. So if your food was trash, <laughs> that means your wedding was trash. Yep. If you ain't have an open bar, if the <laughs> if, was it top shelf, was, was it, it bottom shelf? Yeah. Yep. Those that are the questions yo, that get asked. Those yep. are the questions, and we're seeing in this culture where um, that was very important. Yeah. Right. Where um, being able to you know entertain um, during this long period of time this celebratory occasion mm. you know that that was very important for the culture and then you know we're seeing a scenario right now but dude i used to read this all the time and it's like jesus was invited to a wedding and he went yeah yeah he was he was a dude yo dog, Liberty. listen when christ come back whatever room that he's in he's going to be the man in that room oh, like yeah. he's going to be the that guy, of course, mm-hmm. man of the people. Like he's not a lame. People think, <laughs> nah, <laughs> Jesus is far. Like, like he's a lame. He's not a lame. He's far uh, from a lame. He's dog. perfect. Yeah, like his character is like you said. It's it's some like you said. He got invited. He that got means invited. they wanted him around. Yeah, you know he was somebody that you wanted to be around, and that's why everybody followed him. That's why they was around him. Because his character, like you said, it, it was perfect. He was good. Mm. Like there wasn't no, like I, I think I said it before, there's no ulterior motive with Jesus. Like if he does something, it's because of that's who he, that's who he is. He ain't trying to look for something from you. He don't mm. want nothing from you. He's really giving because that's who he is. That's his character. Right. And um, you, you mentioned it that, uh, you know, interesting that John opens up. <sighs> God, I'm so yes. <laughs> so Mark Chill. one, one for Ange. <laughs> and she went, and he banged it. Oh, no. Word, <laughs> he I gotta fix everything it. back <laughs> up. That's how hard he banged. I think he scared himself when he banged it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yo, keep it moving, bro. Yo. Keep it moving. Let's yo, that must have been the hardest yo, microphone bang. Yo, B, he, he rearranged yo. the whole setup. He had to yo. put everything back in line. Yo, last week you sat on your hands the whole episode. <laughs> yo, I had to scratch the face, man. <laughs> the first right time now. he put his hands up, he bangs the yo, mic. He scared himself. He bangs it so hard. <laughs> <laughs> yo, so um, oh, I just wanted to bring up a point real quick. Um, so so this is the first, like, we the scene that we're getting. Jesus is at a wedding, and we're seeing 
you know, marriage, you know, mm. the union between a man and a woman. And Jesus is there. God is there. Amen. Right. So relating that to the whole in the beginning, Adam Genesis, you're seeing this scene where, you know, the first time we see man and woman, it's God preside, pres, presiding over right. a marriage. Right. And this kind of opens up, like the action, right? The first scene, the first miracle, it opens up at a wedding. Mm -hmm. Coincidence? Maybe. I don't know. Mm. It's just something that I noticed, you know, that I, I wanted to point out. So now, from that, you see the value mm. that God puts in marriage. Amen. Right? You see the... um how much he, 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 he sees marriage. Yep. You know, that John kind of opens up. And then it, it, it's it's crazy how you said, you know, from um the garden with Adam and Eve, like you think that's like the only thing that we got to take, you know, man got to take with him from the garden. You know, after man fell in sin, everything was ruined. But that, that, um, that institution of marriage, that covenant, yeah, right. that covenant between a man and a woman, yep. um, you know, we it, it it left the garden with man and right. you know, and right. you know, you think about even Paul, you know, he says, you know, it represents Christ and the church, and that's a mystery. So, you know, just to see Christ come at a wedding, you know, he's at a wedding, and then Paul tells you, you know, you know, um, the marriage between a man and a woman is um is Christ and his church. And that's a mystery. And he says it's a mystery. And how deep that goes. And then you think about, again, my favorite book, Revelation. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was tempted. Ange, to, Ange, I was tempted. He was right. He I was listening right. to last week. He said week. Revelations. He said Revelations. You see, and twice, that's why, that's why like I stopped. Five times. <laughs> and like, Revelation, <laughs> the book of Revelation, <laughs> and you hear, you know, about the marriage supper of the Lamb, you know, but... Um, yeah, again, Christ putting his stamp on of approval on marriage. You know, he, he approves marriage. And you just think about people who, you know, I remember just before I was saved, you know, you just, you have this stigma, you know, you and your boys and everybody and every, just the stigma on marriage. Like, oh, no. Yeah, if you, were, if you was to get married, you was a sucker. Right. right. Oh, yeah. how you could get. Oh, yeah. ball and chain. Oh, Make sure you get the prenup. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? You hear all of that. And, um, you know, after you get saved, you're like, yo, man, Christ, not only, you know, was he at the wedding, but he saved the wedding. Mm. Yo, marriage is dope, man. Amen. It's a beautiful covenant that the Lord created. And covenant, yep. It just it's, provides protection, you know, from everything out there. And, you know, just in context here, like I see, I see his mom. And the faith, like obviously she knew that her son was God. But but Ange, before you get there, what happened next? Verse three. No, nah, not even verse three. We still yeah, verse three. Mm -hmm. Verse three was yeah. where we at? Why can't I find verse three? And they and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, "They have no wine." Mm -hmm. So, sure. I mean, so that's where I was sort of leaning. Is just the. The fact that the mom, by faith, went up to her son, you know, to do something, you know, to help these people out. And you look at that and you're wondering, why is the mom worried about that? Like, could she have been a family member? Could she have mm -hmm. been somebody working, you know, the, the wedding? You know, like you wonder, like, if she was just a, a guest, this isn't something that she would have, you know, been worried about. But... She was so that tells us that she was sort of involved. They made a, they may have been family, right. but um, when I when I when I read this, I immediately thought was like, she's living with with Christ for thirty three years, right? Mm -hmm. He had to be doing miracle upon miracle, so of course she knew, you know. Mm, well, well uh, can I can I finish? Oh my bad. Yo, you interrupt me, son. Chill. So that's what in my mind. I, that's the first thing I thought of. Right? Was like, yo, he had to be doing. Because how else did she come to him so boldly looking for him to do something like this? Because she knew he was going to do something spectacular. But then later on, you you read, and it's like it's this is the beginning 
of his signs. Mm. You know, so this was the first miracle. So that faith that she had to know that my son could do this because he's God. So that that just caught me. I'm like, hmm, that faith that Mama Dukes had, you know, was powerful. Well, I mean, did she, like, we don't know what she thought, right? So, like you said, it seems like she was very invested in this ceremony. Um, could have been family. We don't know. But she was involved heavily. Yeah. And a problem occurred, right? So now we have a problem. And the problem is we're running out of wine. You know, you run out of wine and then we got two or three more days of celebration. That's humiliating. That, that's exactly humiliation for the family, the new couple. You yeah. Know, that's just not good. So um, it's interesting where she comes up to Jesus and she just states the problem. And. I understand what you're saying, Ange, but based on, you know, as we move on later on, it it tells us this is the this is the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so just, I, I got that, but I'm just saying reading it, you know, just quickly without reading the other verses. Right. You know, what, what jumped to mind was that she may have been used to him doing certain things already, but that wasn't the case. But and I'm just imagining raising Jesus Christ. Mm. He was perfect, right? Perfect son. Responsible. Mm. Um, not lazy. So who else in this, you know, production? Because a, a wedding could be very stressful. A lot of things going on. It's kind of like, all right, I'm going to lean on Jesus. Because I'm, I'm a depend. He'll figure something out. Not knowing whether it's going to be a miracle, but if I'm going to lean on anybody else, or if I'm going to depend on anybody else in this wedding, who would it be? Yeah. I mean, I see that, but she knew what she was doing. She knew he, he was going to do a miracle. Like, that's what, uh, I mean, what uh, was he supposed to do? Go to the corner store and buy some more wine? Like, But what did he tell her? This is exactly why I say that he he expected she was expecting him to do a miracle because he said my hour has not yet come so to me he knew that she was expecting the miraculous because he's he told her like you know i'm not trying see, to put myself out there right i see now. what you're saying all right you I see what you. i mean yeah i see what you mean so that that's what i see when i get that and that's why initially when i brought up that point like oh she had to be living with him doing miracles growing up as a kid just levitating and but then it said obviously <laughs> this guy's you know what i'm saying like you sure you're not talking about david blaine nah. talking about nah, just me, ba imagine is... baby jesus doing nah, some crazy nah, thing. you know what i'm saying said david well, blaine no, i did not say david blaine according to the blaine, scriptures bro. he this I'm this was his dog. first this was his first <laughs> i act. see that in 11 it says that i know but i'm just saying no no i got you i got you no i and i agree i understand i understand what you mean cuz Yo, that was not. That was. Yeah, that was that's two. That was that's two, two for Ange. That's but I ain't do Ange. none last week, people. None. No, no. But I, I, I feel what you're saying about. Mm -hmm. You know, she came with a situation that probably seemed impossible. Yeah. Right. In the midst, that's like you're in a live production, and, um, the the power went out. Mm. But you know, I like the fact that she didn't tell him what to do you know how many times when we pray we pray and tell god how to answer our prayers yeah oh mm. god yeah I, i'm gonna need you to do this xyz abc but she came and she said um yeah we out of wine and then what what did christ what was christ's response to her woman what does your concern <laughs> Woman. have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. And Christ was like, yo, why? How you? He, my lady. So woman was a, you know, it was a term of endearment. My lady, exactly. why? How are you involving me in this situation? How are you dragging me into this situation? Hmm. <laughs> and the idea of, of our um, timetable, God's timetable, God's timing is... Um, 
being highlighted. Mm. And I, I I see just the relationship is changed because like you said, you know, that's this is his mother. You know, my mother my mother didn't start asking me to do things until I became an adult. Mm. You know what I mean? When I when I was young, there was no asking. It was, yo, you're going to do this, you're going to do that. Yeah. But just like, you know, that humility she came with, you know, like you said, she didn't tell him what to do. She just stated the problem. And look how he respond. He's like, yo, what that has to do with me? But you can tell the relationship is shifting. You know, she's starting to recognize him as a man mm. and not even only as a man. But, you know, he's coming. He, he came to the party with his disciples. So he's not, you know what I mean? He's just not the the, the, the regular carpenter or, or, you know, whatever he was doing before that. He's just not that guy no more. Now he's a man and she's respecting that. Mm. And then you just think about, you know, just the relationship between parents and their children. You know, when your kids get to a certain age, um, you know, and, and they grow in their walk, you know, and they start to just become their own person. Do you still look at them as just, you know, you're o- they're always going to be your little baby, but at a certain point, you know, that relationship change. And how do you deal with your kids? You know, let's say you're saved and they're saved. How do you approach them? How do you talk to them? But, you know, I just see just how beautiful that, that relationship transitioned, mm. you know, to where it's like two adults talking now, even though that it's mother and son. Yeah. So so Jesus is like, come on, you know I'm about my father's business. Mm. I remember referencing when he was 12 years old mm-hmm. and uh, they left because they went to celebrate the Passover and they went, what, two days journey? And they realized, where's baby Jesus? He's not here. And they had to go back and then he kind of told her. And that that's kind of probably what he was hinting to. He was like, you get me involved with things but you know I'm about my father's business and the time, the hour is not yet. Mm. But how did, what did she say? Like we still see her faith, right? Yeah. And her trust. Yep. yep. She's like, listen, I'm, I'm leaving it in your hands. And she told the servants that were there, just listen to whatever he say. No expectations. And I, I and Ange, I understand what you're saying, but I kind of see it the other way where she really had no expectations where it's not like she said, can you give us, you know, <laughs> can you create some wine? Can you do something? She just said, this is the problem. I trust you. Listen to whatever he says. But what what do you think she she thought he was going to do? I don't know. If she didn't think he was going to do something miraculous, I, I, I'd like to know what, what you guys think she was thinking. No, I mean, I, I believe she definitely came in faith, you know, because she, she knew um, who her son was, like you said. You know, that's why she stated the problem. Because you got to think, um, why didn't she go to the servants first? You know, why didn't she go to the exactly. bridegroom? She went you know, to- you, you could have went any other way, but you went to your son. And because you knew, like I said, um, I think she understood the relationship had changed. And like he's like he came there with his disciples. So she knew, OK, things are changing with my son. Things are moving, you know, and that's why Christ, I think even when Christ mentioned it, you know, my hour has not yet come. Like mm-hmm. basically, like you said uh, before, um, God's timetable, like, OK, the clock has started. You know what I mean? Like, all right, things are moving now. Like what, what he was, what he was set here to do, and why he came, and you know all these things. She, she, she was aware of that. And what you know, and um, I mean, Christ reminded her. I should say, you know, maybe she, you know, what whatever the situation was, because there was a need. She needed wine, but you're seeing this back and forth where Christ is reminding her, like, you know what, you know, my hour is not yet come. I came for a special mission. And what I see there that's so beautiful about Jesus is that he was enjoying life, bro. He was enjoying the the, the friendships that he was building because he knew that once things started, it was going to lead to 
crucifixion. You know, mm-hmm. like it wasn't gonna get any easier. So and he's like, yo, my hour has not yet come. You know, That's when a good I, point. when I see that, he's like, yo, I'm enjoying life right now. I know what's about to go down. Let me just be a normal dude with my peoples, mm-hmm. you know? So that's that's just beautiful right there. That's a I, good point. I also see an aspect of prayer, all right? And a certain type of prayer where you might be in a impossible situation. And we see Mary turning to God and putting her faith in God, mm-hmm. all right? Not trying to figure it out for herself not trying to go to like you said why didn't she talk to the right that's not that's not what she did she put complete reliance and faith and whatever jesus would have done Mm. right he could have been like i'm not gonna do anything it's not the time that would have been all right too yeah you understand what i'm saying yeah so you know just that picture of of a, a certain type of prayer um, and just just putting your faith in, in Christ and just just leaving it out there. You know, God, this is the problem. And I trust that you, you can fix it. You can make it better. Yeah, and one, I might just be skipping a little bit, but you think about the... Yeah, don't skip. The bride and the groom, right, in this situation. They have no idea what's going on. They're just having a good time. Who knows? Who's who's in, who's privy to this of what's going on? Just the the servants, uh, right? And and Mary, and his, Mary, Jesus, Jesus, the servants, and his his likely uh, the disciples, right? His disciples, yeah. So you got yeah. a whole party, wedding party, um, bridegroom. Um, you also have the master of the what do you of call the them? ceremony and master of the feast. Can we still use the word master? Oh, chill, bro. Listen, yo, my, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> yo, no. yo. Let me bring it back. Let me bring it back. <laughs> right? So uh, only a s- small group of people know what's going on. Right? So then what happens? Yeah, you could use the word master. It's in verse 9. <laughs> and the master of the feast. Exactly. It's the yeah, scripture, bro. It's the scripture. I was just being... Uh, oh, all right. No, I, no I know what I'm going to use the word master whenever I see it in the scriptures, though. Yeah. Let's go. Yo, but I, like I was just saying, like it's it's beautiful that the bride and the groom had no clue how close they were to this like extreme humiliation that they would have likely never lived down, but the Lord had their back, you know, even when they weren't expecting it. And how many times is, does the Lord save us from humiliation when we don't even, res- um, you know, know that it's about to go down? Mm, good so. point. So, so going off of that, Ange. Um, uh, let me see if any of you guys know what does wine typically represent in the scriptures. Like, Ange is on you. What does you know, wine? You know I don't drink, bro. So y'all no, 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 it's not one. about you it's drinking. Not about it's you drinking. It's, it's like about the idea of, said, I don't drink. <laughs> of wine. Uh, like what does it represent? Nah, y'all. I'm gonna pass this one. I'm a joy, joy. Okay. Right? So is this? You know, it's use this kind of represent this joy so we're seeing a joyous celebration that you know comes to an end and the joy is gone the joy run out Mm. but jesus christ is able to bring joy Mm -hmm. right um what else? What else? What else we seeing? Verse six. Um, just seeing uh, the servants. You know, Mary goes to the servants and she she's like, "Whatever he says to you, do it." Mm. And the servants do exactly what Jesus tells them to do. Yep. And you think about you know you're serving God and. You know, times God tell you to do something and you're like, nah, I'm not going to do that. You know, God is trying to work a miracle. Jesus is trying to work a miracle in your life. And he's like, yo, fill the pots with water. And you got to think in your mind, you like water. Water ain't wine. You know what I mean? Why would you tell me to fill pots with water? That don't make sense. And how many times Christ has 
you know, t- said to one of us, go do something. And you're like, nah, that don't make no sense. I'm yep. not doing that. Mm-hmm. And Christ is trying to work a miracle. And it just, it's just, um, you know, it humbles me every time when, you know, like the scripture says, you know, we're co-laborers with Jesus. I'm like, you don't need me for nothing. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you're God, you're creator. You could do anything that you want at any time, but yet you choose to use servants. And um, I just see the faith and the obedience of the servants, you know, because the servants could have been like, nah, this don't make no sense. We're not doing nothing. Yep. But you're seeing all these, you know, um, the people that's on board, you know, um, Mary's faith, but also the servant's obedience and how important obedience as a servant. You know, I know plenty of times I've failed where, you know, the Lord has told me to do something and I was like, eh, that, it, it's not that serious. I don't think I have to do that. I don't think I have to go back to that person and um, tell them about Jesus. I don't feel like I have to you know, speak to that coworker, go pray for that coworker, or go pray for that neighbor. Mm. That's not that serious. You know, it, it don't mean nothing. And not understanding that Christ is trying to do a miracle and mm. he wants to use us as servants. So he allows us to cooperate with him mm. and his work, which is super dope that he even, you know, enables us allows us to cooperate with him. So what does he tell him to do? There were six water pots of stone according to the manner of purification of the Jews. What was that, what was that talking about? Mm. Purification of the Jews. So, you know, this was something that, I guess, pots filled with water that they would use to wash the outside, right? It had to do with the outside physically washing. Mm-hmm. All right? So he says, fill those pots up with water. And they filled it up. And he said to them, draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. And they did exactly what he told them to do. And then when the master tasted it, master of the feast tasted the water that was made wine. So now it's, it's, you know, I'm wondering if the servants, when they poured it into the cup, whether they saw it was wine mm. or there was like, this guy's telling me to go give, give these people water <laughs> yep. and try to pass it as wine. Mm. Right. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning towards that. I, I'm, t- I'm leaning towards that too. Cause then they probably, you know, handed it to the master of, of the, the feast and then saw his reaction because that was the best wine he ever had. Mm. Some Jesus wine. Yep. Like I said, it's like, that's crazy. Like you said, like, you know, he filled it up with water and then he said, draw some out and then give it to them. So now you're talking about drawing it in the cup. And in my mind, I'm like, what you trying to do, man? You trying to pass this on? <laughs> You know, I'm thinking as a man, I'm like, what are you going to try to do? You're going to try to pass this off as wine? Like, you crazy. But again, it's just like d- just what he's telling them to do, it takes faith. Exactly. You Doesn't know, he didn't sense. even tell them, yo, taste it first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yo, make sure you taste it. Yeah, go think. ahead, taste that. And um, if it's good, then give it to them. Because I know me, I'm like, yo, you just told me to pour water in a cup. While I'm walking to them, we're talking about a pre-corona. I probably would have tasted it, made sure it was wine. <laughs> you know, now you can't, <laughs> you can't do that um, post-corona. But um, you know what I mean? I'm like, you know, you thinking they they walking and handing Jesus. I mean, handing um the the master the, of master, the, feast. the master of the feast this wine. They didn't taste it. You know, the scriptures don't say they tasted it. They, ain't, you know what I mean? Like that just takes faith. So, so what did this uh, master of the feast say? What was his reaction? He said, um, was it verse 10? Yeah. Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. And he was talking to the bridegroom. Mm. So you're thinking about Jesus did this miracle, and... No glory. He didn't get the credit for it. 
I saw King and right how there, many, bro. And how many times has that happened? Craziness. Nobody knew what happened. So now the bridegroom steps in front of the, the feast. And he gets this big compliment, round of applause. this round of applause, like, <laughs> like, and, and you just see the custom, the custom was, you know, um, you know, you bring the good, good stuff out first. And when everybody get drunk, you bring out the cheap stuff because, you know, when you drunk, you don't really care if yeah. it's, if it's Can't top shelf or difference. bottom shelf. <laughs> Is it, isn't that the way of the world? All right. I'm going to draw you in. Mm. I'm going to draw you in with some good stuff. Get you hyped, get you drunk, get and you then high. after that, after that, suck the joy out of you. Feed you garbage. No more joy. Empty. Ran out. You know, that's the way of the world. Mm. But we see um, Jesus Christ. He's able to, uh, you know, going back to, again, I keep, I keep mm. st- sticking with the theme of John and what he's trying to convey in this gospel, you know, in the beginning was the word, right? And everything was created. Everything that was created was the word. And we're seeing Jesus manipulating um, water, right? Something that would take months or however long for the fermentation process happen instantly. He's not bound by time. He's not bound by the, mm. you know, properties, mm-hmm. uh, H2O. Nah, none, none of those things could stop him, mm. right? And that's the picture John is trying to, like, listen, this is, this is God. He's able to manipulate matter. He's able to, you know, time is not a, a, a boundary for him. Mm. And he was able to do this. Mm. And he's the one that could bring you that joy. That joy that the world trick you into thinking that you could get, but it runs out. And then you're left empty. But only he could produce that and keep the party going. But one thing that's important, I think, too, is to the servants. You know, like they were the ones that the Lord used to, for this miracle so they didn't get any credit either but they were there they saw the lord move um mm-hmm. but because of their um sort of faithfulness uh, and because of their faith other lives were touched so if you're out there serving and you know you're not getting credit man just continue to serve the lord and trust in him because he's going to use you to touch other lives in different capacities and the thing is, like, they they got to witness Jesus do this miracle. Like mm. you said, they got to see the yep. the ins and outs of him working. And like you said, it's like being, when you're serving the Lord, you know, you like you said, you, you might not get credit. You ain't going to get no credit. Mm-mm. But the things the Lord show you, you know, like you, you think about, you know, when you're reading the word of the Lord and the things the Lord shows you, the the, the kind of the behind the scenes mm. when the Lord, when the Holy Spirit starts to teach you and you know, you're getting, you know, directly, you know, taught by the Holy Spirit and he starts to show you these things in his word. And it's like, you know, yeah, you could share it with somebody and they get fed off of it and whatever. And you don't get no credit for it, but you, but during that study time, yep. when you was alone with the Lord or whatever it might be, when you're working with the Lord and you get to be a co-laborer with him, you get to see him in action. That's you get dope. to see the behind the scenes. Yeah. So while everybody was enjoying the wine, the servants was like, yo, we saw how the wine was made. What? That's the <laughs> part right there. That's dope. Word. That's, a, that's a really good point. That's awesome, man. So in verse 11, it says, this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. After this, he went down to Capernaum, he, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. Beginning of signs. What's a sign? Miracle. Yeah, but what does a sign do? All right. If you points. Points you. So, you know, 
this is the beginning of things that was pointing to Jesus as the Messiah. He's the Messiah. He's the one. He's God. He's the Savior. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, like mm -hmm. um, John the Baptist herald. Um, and it's pointing to him. Like, these signs were to point people to Christ. Same thing that John the Baptist was doing, pointing people to Christ. Mm. Hmm. And it said, and it said, it will, it manifested His glory. You know, yep. you think about manifestation, like yo, that's yo three, and yo. is three. <laughs> this coffee got me too hyped. So. Nah, I think, I think it's because. He, he wanted to be perfect today because <laughs> he had everything set up to be perfect. Yeah. You know and, what? I uh, set it up differently than what I did last week. So. Right, man. And, and, he, and you fell short. I fell short, man. <laughs> I'm filthy. And it says, um, and it manifested. How his, many are you going for, Edge 5? <laughs> nah, I think he'll be good. I think he's going to be extra this cautious. Is what, three? I think he he's going to be extra dog. cautious. Last week he was sitting on his hands. Don't do that, man. He probably won't talk for the rest of <laughs> Why would be so focused? <laughs> I'm just happy he's we'll, past the 45 minute we'll, mark. We'll lose him. <laughs> we'll lose him for the rest of the podcast. Shout out to the Starbucks Energy. Drink, yo, man. yo, dog. Yeah, they chill, not. Chill, they chill. not. Are giving free yeah. promo. No right, free though. promo, dog. No. <laughs> yo, if you hear me, Starbucks, if you out there, holla at your boy Phil. Yeah. <laughs> yo, he know. Yo, Starbucks ain't cutting checks. Word dog. up, man. <laughs> no free promo, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, so um, but it says uh, it manifested his glory and. You know, um, just to think, you know, his glory has always been there. You know, like Jesus has always been who he was. But these signs is starting to reveal who he really is. You know what I mean? And just like, you know, like the book of John says, like he write these things so that you, sh you could know that he is the son of God. And it's not like he became the son of God. No, he didn't become the son of God. It's like what we read in John 1. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Mm. Like, this is who he's always been. You know, Jesus has always been this guy that you come to him, is a need, and, you know, he's going to, you know, he's going to save the day. He's going to save the party. You know, he's going to save, he's going to save a life. Like, this is, this is who he is. He's about saving people. Like you said, he saved their reputation. You know, they would have been humiliated. And, Word. you know, and even though it wasn't his hour, you know, because of who he is. That's a good point. Right. He said, it's not time. So why did he do it? Right. Mm -hmm. So now you're seeing the compassion. Now you're seeing the love. Which is a very good point, Mike. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Um. No, like you said, um, just as, you know, like it says, it says signs Jesus did in Cana and manifested his glory, you know, and I, I think that's so important because people don't, like you said, um, the bridegroom got all the, <laughs> yeah. he got all the praise in the party. He got the shout out. He got the shout out. He got the shine. But, you know, to his disciples and to, you know, to his, it says, and his disciples believed in him. Yep. You know, so those six that he was with, it was like, it was really for you guys. Yeah, they knew the deal. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it wasn't for the party. Exactly. You know, the mission, you know, it, it was really for you, for you guys. And it manifested his, like I said, it manifested his glory. And Jesus has always been the son of God. He's always been the word. He's always been creator. He was there from the beginning, you know, before, before time even existed. This is who he was. And these signs that we're going to start seeing is going to manifest, is going to reveal his glory. Right. Amen, I think there, I think there's um, seven signs of miracles in the book of John. I could be wrong. No, you're right. But um, this is the first. And, you know, just like Mike said, his, his followers, right, they were going off of the person they were following before, right, that said, hey, pointed at somebody. So they was going off of, John the Baptist cosign, and now we see this progressive. Um, you know they believe this is something that, yo. John the Baptist was right, right now that we're seeing this, 
So you see this is something that probably helped their faith a little more. Mm. And as we read, we know it, it was a progressive. They had to grow and they had to learn. So now that they're, you know, probably spent a few days with Christ and him just, you know, rabbi, teacher, just probably teaching them, talking to them. And they was like, man, this guy's wise. This guy's humble. This guy's loving. Seeing him, you know, as he was, perfect, mm. right? And now they're seeing, whoa, this is something supernatural. So now that's just building their faith, building their faith in their walk. With this guy that we just kind of really just met, and we're really getting to know him intimately, and this is something that, um, you know, when it says that, that they believe, it's like this is something that built, you know, th- is building on their faith. All right, man. So let's let's uh that was that was good, man. I like I like that little section we just yeah, went through right there. Yeah, man. The spirit is Andrew's moving. still up. Spirit is moving. <laughs> I think it's cause Angie's still up. It's flowing now. Angie's seat. <laughs> Ange. He's probably like he's like a wet blanket when he, <laughs> when he Nah, you know what it is. <laughs> like to shout out my other sponsor, the Apiolar little fan oh, I got here, bro. Yo, yo this all guy the out here promo, giving out free promo, man. Dog. <laughs> He might got, at me, op, you he lost might, filthy. He might got a side deal. <laughs> he has, yeah, I think he started something, dog. Because he's a shot. Yo, how that every... fan got here so quick? Yo. So we might have to kill two him. Two days. Dog. Why? Because I hear it. Stop playing, bro. Nah, you feel dog. it. That's what it is. <laughs> you can feel a little bit of my breeze and you hating right now. Mike is over there sweating, but I'm feeling good. Nah, you tapped in um this week. He got the he got the uh the um the ten dollar joint from the the, t- 99 the, t- cent the, 90, the ninety nine cent curtains that's blocking up all the entrances. So the AC sitting here, it's, it sat a little longer than usual. Yeah, it's, it's not boiling in here. Chill, the rain helped you out, dog. It did. It did. Nah, don't talk about the rain, man. I got <laughs> I got stuck in the rain. Today. Traumatized. I'm traumatized, traumatized right now over the rain. All right, so let's all right, keep so let's on. go to the next section, man. I think we could finish this chapter in, in one sitting. Yeah, so yeah I'm going to read the whole 13 to the end, right? Go to, for it. To tw- yeah, you could go. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. So the Jews answered and said to him, What sign do you show to us since you do these things? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then the Jews said, It has taken forty-six years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he had risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this to them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus has said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them, because he knew all men, and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Yeah, that was a good reading, dog. I can't read that well, dog. Yeah, he's the he's the arm bearer. Yo. I thought July 4th ended, though. Nah. These Ch- July 4th was like two and a half months this year. <laughs> these fireworks are still out there. <laughs> it, might, it might go to Labor Day. <laughs> like the whole summer is just July Yo, 4th. Me, I thought July 4th. I thought it was over. I thought I was probably going to get some sleep this <laughs> nah, week, dog. Not this summer. Oh, man. So what are we seeing? What's happening? Break it down. Passover. Passover, you know, a Jewish culture, the Jewish men had to attend three feasts, right? Mm. Uh, Passover. What's the other two? Was it, was it Feast of Tabernacles? Feast of Tabernacles. I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah. I think it was Passover, Feast of Tabernacles, I think. And um, what was the last one? I don't know. All right. But we have Passover right now. 
and Jesus is in the temple, right? He walked up in the temple. And what's happening? What's going on? Some craziness, man. People making money off the Lord. Yep. Mm. He found in the temple those who sold oxen and sheep and doves. So, you know, during these feasts, people would travel long distances, mm. you know, to come to, uh, you know, Jerusalem, come to the temple. So usually they would exchange money and with that currency, they were able to buy, you know, their sacrifice. Instead of traveling however long with the animal that they needed to sacrifice, they would buy it when they got over there. Mm -hmm. So somehow this turned into a racket. You know, I, I read that um, uh, some of them would indeed bring their own animals. But when they got there, these dudes would... would Tell them right. that the animals were not worthy of a, the sacrifice. They weren't pure because enough. They or, weren't unblemished. Exactly. Right. So, so it had some defect. And none of the people who brought their own animals would ever get approved. So we're dealing with a racket. Exactly. And, and who was controlling the temple at that time? The religious leaders, the Pharisees. Yep. Right? The same guys that sent... Uh, Sent people to go question John the Baptist. Uh, yep. We read in a uh, previous chapter. So Jesus roll up and he sees this going on. And he's like, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't think he was saying all right. He was like, no, nah, no. Nah. He, uh, he was doing something with his hands, though. And he's like, all right, I see what's going on over here. I'm about to, I'm about to fix this situation mm. just now. I would have loved to be there. Yo, that is hilarious. Mm. Like, how long does it take to uh, to form a, a whip of cords? <laughs> People probably looked at him like, yo, what is he doing? I don't know. <laughs> what is he braiding over there? He probably was patient, too. Oh, yeah. You know when... You know he when he did it mad slow, yeah, right? Yeah, you ever... Yeah, you he know... Was he was probably methodical. Was like, yeah, let me does. make this whip. It was the perfect length, too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't have a smirk on his face or nothing. Yo, know, everything about that whip was perfect, yeah. dog. If you wanted to see a perfect whip, Jesus made the perfect whip. Yo, dog. <laughs> Yo, but it's just crazy how that that verse. You know what? I caught in my mind just him sitting there. Yo, dog, patiently. You're putting time into that. <laughs> You'll be and, and everybody probably just moving and shaking. He probably ain't even they, recognize. They, they yeah, you not even walk like, by, walk him, by nah, him, and he probably time, just sat. he's just there like your dog. Once this whip is done, <laughs> <Once the switch. laughs> it's time to clean Yo, up shop. B. It's time to clean up Yo, shop. Yo, but it just it oh, didn't even man. transition. Like after fourteen says, and the money changes doing business, and then it just goes to when he had made a whip of course. There's no transition there. It's just like, wow, the Lord was angry, bro. Yeah, you know what? And another thing is they were in the area, the court of the Gentiles. That's where this um, bazaar, mm, That's right? true. Yeah, yeah. This bazaar or this flea market circus type atmosphere, because it was busy. You understand, hundreds of thousands of people are coming to Jerusalem. And... Um, so the court of the Gentiles was where the Jews, you know, the Gentiles would come seeking the Lord and the Jews are supposed to kick it to them like your dog, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and like basically uh, uh, evangelize to them. Exactly. Right. But that whole area is turned into a, a bargain bazaar. Yeah. Yep. Swap you know, me. Swap me, racket, money changing. Straight up. Just madness. Yeah. So now imagine Jesus Christ like your dog. Yah was given this responsibility to lead people to God. And y'all robbing them. Y'all taking advantage of them. Yep. Dog. That whip. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> All of that was in that whip, dog. 
bro. Yo. But they were using, they were using. I'm getting lightheaded, bro. bro. (laughs) I'm not. All of that was in that whip. All of that was in that whip, though. (laughs) You was gonna get every bit of that, dog. Oh, the three feasts is um, Passover, the Feast of Weeks, and um, the Feast of Booths. Those are the three feasts. Yo, but these people, they weren't just taking advantage of these people. They were using. God, the temple, like that. Yes, the, the the Passover, like, and that's what we we see that all today, bro, in the churches, man. Mm. We see people, you know, um, deceiving, you know, people who are coming genuinely. Like these people were walking for sometimes months to get to this, to get to Jerusalem, to this mm, temple. It was a long journey. They were coming with genuine hearts, and then they had to. They were greeted with, "Nah, the sacrifice you brought." got too many blemishes, you got to buy this. Mm. But then, because they also had different currency, they only accepted two diff- two types of currency at the temple. So that's where the money changes came in. Right. Right. They were like, nah, you got to use this type. Mm. But then they would charge, I heard they upcharged like 600 times a normal price to change the currency. Like it was, it was just crazy what nah, these people was, were it doing. It was straight up robbery. And these were the Lord's people. And yeah. they were getting taken advantage of. And I can see the Lord now, man. Cleansing the temple the way he did, he cleansed this temple. He's cleansing a lot of churches now, bro. Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. No, I was gonna, um, now I was gonna say that you know, it it bothered him, Mm. you know, going inside the temple. You know, you you have, um, you know, um, you know, going inside that like the temple is supposed to be a place of worship, Mm. supposed to be a place where people, you know, give reverence to God and, um, you know, like like he said, y'all made it into a den of thieves. You know what I mean? And it was important to him. You know, the church, the temple, that, that building. You know, it wasn't necessarily the building that was important to him, but it's it's what it represented. You know, and um you know, he he, he understood that. And I think even in another gospel he's like, you know, my father's house should be called a house of prayer. You know, he was like, This is what this the temple is supposed to be for it's supposed to be a house of prayer it's supposed to be a house that gives reverence to god and it mattered to jesus you know that's 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 just one thing i just wanted to say that you know when he went inside the temple just what was being done inside the temple um that's not what it was for and he could have easily went in there and been like uh you know oh god doesn't dwell in temples made with hands and you know he could have said that and you know like like how uh, the lord said in the old testament like what what temple are you going to build me that i should dwell in you know heaven is my earth um um earth is my footstool heaven is my throne earth is my footstool but you know jesus he was like no you know this is supposed to represent prayer you know it's supposed to represent reverence to god and worship to god and you we, we're seeing righteous anger but he said it represented a den of thieves could you imagine that Imagine a den just full of deplorables, just thieves. The total opposite, like what Mike is saying, the total opposite of what it's supposed to be. He describes it as a den full of thieves. And you know what else I'm thinking about? The people. Mm -hmm. The people that knew exactly what was going on, but probably felt like, Dog, what are we going to do? What could we do about it? This is just how it goes. This is just how it is. We go here three times a year, and we get, you know, whatever. We get shaken down. Mm. But what are you going to do? We got to go worship the Lord. We got to go, you know, and follow these feasts. And and that's another thing, the powerless, right? You being powerless in that circumstance and that... um scenario and you know jesus was thinking about all of that like you taking advantage of the people like you destroy imagine the people that were poor and couldn't afford they could barely afford the trip and then they get over there and you shake them down again that's why he was angry bro it was yeah. his people mm-hmm. that was that righteous that anger. Affected, that was that man. righteous anger and he and he mentioned i think like even in the old testament where micah like he mentions, you know, just how the children of Israel was at that time, you know, just taking advantage of the poor and, 
you know, his anger, like when you read the book of Micah, just his anger against that, you know, when, um, you know, when, when those who are in power take advantage of those who are less fortunate or those who don't have it and rob from them and steal from them, you know, he, his, his anger. And like it says in verse 17, it says, then his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up, you know, and just, it was a zeal. You know, like people would be like, "Oh, Jesus got angry, and you know, he 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 went too far. He went overboard." But it was a zeal, it was a righteous anger, um, and it was for the house of God. You know, like you said, for 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 His people to come there and and worship and to give reverence and to sacrifice and to do these things. But like you said, they made it into a den of thieves. It was just a straight. And the people that say that, I'm like, all right, imagine you walked into your father's house. And you saw a circus going on, and you would be cool. Straight up, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's interesting the way he says it. He says, my father's house. And I'm sure the religious leaders, when they heard that, they was like, what? What do you mean your father's house? Mm. Yep. What, are you, what are you talking about? Right? Mm. So he chases them out. He flips the tables like, yo. Everybody get out. This this can't this is not happening over here. This is my father's house. You guys turned it into a house of merchandise merchandise. All right? And we see um him fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, Psalms sixty nine. And his his disciples, they got it. Ah. Oh, yo, he just fulfilled the prophecy. Mm. Yo, we just saw him we just left the wedding. You know, a little while back, and we saw this, and now we're seeing this. So now we see it slowly coming together for the disciples as, as they're seeing, observing Jesus Christ. So what 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 happened? What what did Jews say to him? They stepped to him and said, um, "What sign do you show to us since you do these things?" And it's the one thing about. You know, the Jewish leadership, they were always looking and uh, uh, trying to figure out the authority that the person was coming in. Um, and that's what they, they wanted a sign in order to, for the Lord to prove himself. Yeah. Like, who, who, who gave you the right to do this? Like, what authority do you have? Like, we're the authority over here. Exactly. You can't come over here doing all of this. Like yo, what's uh, yo? Show us where's your credentials, hmm. and what Jesus Christ say to them? Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Boom, <laughs> booyah! <laughs> <laughs> so they was probably like, huh? Talking about that hour again. That hour. That hour. That, yo, that hour was probably always on Jesus Christ's mind. Yo, yes. dog, that's why from the very beginning, and you're gonna, and the crazy thing about it, throughout the gospel, John constantly, right. he remembers every time Jesus talked about that hour, because mm -hmm. it was all about that hour. That's, that's why I that's said, the man, pinnacle. He, he was just enjoying everything with his disciples and family. But and the crazy thing about it is, you know, the the scene before he's party you know what i mean dancing wine yo food, can you imagine Jesus enjoying dancing? everything <laughs> it's lit <laughs> yo the two-step the brooklyn two-step that's what I, and you know i i say i you know when the scripture says um you know like he says you know woman what do you have to do with me it's not my hour and then you think about um the you know when the scripture says when it was the right time jesus came jesus came at the right time you know like this whole year, I, like when, when you go on social media, I'm like, thank God Jesus ain't come during Instagram <laughs> and YouTube and TikTok. 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 <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Because social media and memes, like could you imagine Jesus at the party dancing and somebody made a meme out of him? I mean. You would have, you would have. You know, people who don't understand non-believers, whatever haters, 
and they just that's why he had to come during, <laughs> during the time when there was no cell phones <laughs> no cameras mm. no pictures none of that because people are cruel and people just don't understand and they would have you know took it there so you know but um getting back to this is just you know jesus was just celebratory in the scene before and as soon as you go to jerusalem it's like straight as work. soon as he went to the crib as soon as he you know so now you see this 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 next scene is like work you know i just like the contrast when it was time to get serious you know when it was time to party jesus partied but when it was time to get serious it was time to get serious he was about his father's business and it's just um just to see his nature you know he was perfect in both mm-hmm. and and what are you talking about it took 46 years to build this temple what are you saying <sighs> that's what the leaders thought right yeah they didn't understand they didn't understand what jesus christ was saying and he said you destroy he said destroy this temple like you guys are gonna destroy this temple. and he says i will raise it up gangsta just to so, think no, my lord is a gangster bro and he was he was prophesying about his death yes and sir. resurrection and resurrection yep oh gee but you know what's what's interesting and him saying that phrase he says temple right so the temple was like the focal point of the jewish life like everything centered around the temple but what is he referring to as the temple now his body mm-hmm. so we're seeing the end the end of that legal system mm. like it's 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 crazy what he says and the way he say it cuz they they dug that was their thing right even you know later on in other gospels i'm, I'm not sure if it's in john when his followers like hey you see this temple this is great well, seven wonders yeah, one of the eight um, wonders yeah when you, um mark Mark yeah. says it. Matthew, Matthew twenty four. So I think now so. he's I think so. yeah, I think he's so. like dog. It was Matthew twenty four. It's but not gonna. It wasn't Mark. It's not gonna be about this physical building anymore. Mm-hmm. Now, dog, I'm the temple. Yep. And you destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up. Yeah, they said in verse twenty. It says, "Then the Jews said, it, <laughs> it has taken forty six years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days?" Mm-hmm. You know? so, so now remember the temple you go back to the old testament the temple was the actual presence the shekinah glory mm-hmm. like that was this centralized location of god's presence yeah and that's the focal point of the jewish cult culture the jewish life but you see that that transfer this is about to end and now i'm I'm going to be the focal point. I'm going to be the centerpiece mm. of not only Jewish life, but of everyone, the whole world, everybody. Mm. Y'all, mm. Y'all, y'all see that? or am No, I, I mean, definitely, you know, like, like the scripture says, um, you know, it told, I think, what was it? Gabriel told his mother, Mary, you know, you're going to, there's going to be Emmanuel. I mean, even in the prophecy, what was it? In Isaiah. I think Emmanuel, you know. Um, yo. yo, what's that? That's yo, four? four. <laughs> yo, and yo, for the world record. I had faith in you, dog. Yo, yo B, I, I, my whole I saw, was, I saw was three was going to be the so. last one. I did yo, it differently. You know what I'm it's all set up different. I'm, I'm going to raise up the volume on them bumps. <laughs> It'll be post production. I want to make sure I just break it. It sounds like Showtime at the Showtime at the Apollo, dog. The gong, the heavy gong. But um, yeah, where it says uh, no, no, I, you know, it says Emmanuel. You know, um, where it says God is gonna be with us, and you know that's what it was. You know, it was like you said, it was all supposed to point to Jesus, and Mm -hmm. this is what John is about, and you just see like. You know, second chapter, you see how he just dog take away the temple, like you said, like like everything was surrounded about the, around the temple, and it exposed the temple. This is what the temple was doing. 
you know, y'all was doing this in the temple. Y'all, y'all yeah. made it into a den of thieves. You know, it was, that's why he was like, yo, my house, my father's house should be a house of prayer. That wasn't it. This is what was going on. And like you said, he used that as a, um, he used that as a, a, a opportunity to talk about, you know, um, his death and his resurrection and mm-hmm. just how he transferred it, you know, that it, it's not going to be about Yah sacrificing in the temple right. anymore, you know, because at the end of the day, y'all getting, you know, yeah, this a den of, it's, it's a, like you said, it's a circus, it's a bazaar, but like you said, it's going to be transferred into, you know, this temple being destroyed and raising it up and pointing to that cross, pointing right. to the hour. So, no, definitely. And, and it's dope. Like, John points it out, even in chapter 1, verse 16, where he says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So you're seeing that transfer from the old to the new. Mm-hmm. So this old system, this old, uh, you know, law, sacrifice, all of that, nah, it's going to be about Christ now. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we see the scene with John the Baptist. You know, the Lamb of God, here's the ultimate sacrifice coming. So he's he's fulfilling every aspect of those shadows that were pointing to him. Mm-hmm. The Lamb, the temple, right? The temple being the, the you know, in the beginning of John, we, we read about how God put on flesh, the presence of God. Whereas the old, it was the temple, right? The the holy of holies mm-hmm. where the Shekinah glory was. But now you're seeing all of that was just a shadow. And Christ, he, he you know, in a way, cryptic way, kind of told him that. Like, dog, I'm the temple. Mm-hmm. And you destroy it, I'm going to raise it up in three days. They didn't get it. But as we read on, we read that his followers remembered that after the resurrection they remembered yo I remember when he said now it makes sense yep. right and I'm pretty sure maybe those religious leaders remembered it too like yo he said that mm-hmm. and he did it yeah it is the end it was the end for that system there's a new covenant a new system coming and just you know like he says he says I will raise it up just Again, pointing to his deity, you know, again, pointing to, you know, who he was, you know, it, that's being revealed. Like, you know, like we like we was talking about before, the revealing his glory, you know, and he was like, I have the power to raise it up. You know, that was, it was his, you know, it was him. And um, again, just this is what um, John is constantly pointing that, you know, that you will know that Jesus is the son of God, that he is. Um, how he started off the book in the beginning was the word the word was with God the word was God like Jesus is God you know he has the power mm-hmm. to raise it up he has the power to to, to resurrect you know mm-hmm. and then I just love it where he says I will raise it up like it's me yep <laughs> you know what I mean it's I, I'm in total control over that situation like mm-hmm. he, he says destroy this temple like you're gonna destroy this temple you know and in three days, I will raise it up. Like, you have no power That's gangster. over me. You have no power over my body. Mm-hmm. You have no power over anything that's going on. I am in full authority of mm. everything that's going on here. Psst. Only one man can say that. And that's Jesus. So the last, the last section, um, verse 23 says, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. What are your thoughts on that section? I mean, well, his point, Jesus is his number one um, you know, uh, what he wants to do is have as many people believe as possible. And, mm-hmm. you know, it says that there were people that believed in him, you know, that saving, that faith in Jesus. Right. It had all started there. And uh, so people had already started to, to know who he was and believe in him. 
so it's it's weird. So you know, obviously there was a lot of things that Jesus was do- doing during that time that John just didn't record, right? It said he did a lot of signs um, during the feast. Uh, and many believed in his n- name when they saw this. So people were seeing signs and they believed in his name, but he did not commit himself to them. What does that, like, what do you think that means? Um, just reading it, it says he did not command himself to, to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Um, I'm seeing it as, you know, maybe he knew their hearts, that probably they wasn't fully, you mm-hmm. know, fully in with him. Because right. like it's like... You know, it says, you know, it says many believed in his name when they saw the signs, which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself to them. So quick, quick. uh, Believe and commit. Same Greek word. Right. So Mm -hmm. if you say believe and believe. Right. Right. So. It says Jesus did not believe them. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing people responding to these things that they're seeing these signs right but they're not responding in the way where they're committing themselves right to jesus you understand what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and then we see that throughout john we see you know people are hungry so you're saying that they they weren't genuine in their belief I'm not saying anything. Because in in verse 23, it says that many believed in his name. But it says Jesus didn't commit to them. Or Jesus didn't, that Jesus didn't believe them. Jesus, it said Jesus did not commit himself to them because mm-hmm. he knew all men. Mm-hmm. And then he mm-hmm. said he knew what was in man. Yep. And we already got an example of that with Nathaniel where he was like, yo, I saw you when you was under the tree. He saw Simon. He said, you're this. So we're seeing, you know, you know, you know, Jesus flex his deity and just be like, yo, dog, I know you. Yeah, but I'm, why would those two verses contradict each other then? What do you say? If it's saying that in 23, it's saying many believed in his name. And you're saying in 24 that you, what you get out of verse 24 is that Jesus did not believe them. No, but why did they believe? What were they? What were they? Oh, because seeing? of the signs which he did. So they were responding to the signs. Exactly, which is what. You know, that's why he did these signs. That's why this this ver- this book was written, right? So that these signs may point to him as the Messiah. But I don't know if they were responding wholeheartedly. I mean, all the word says, all we have to do is believe, and that's what these people did. Yeah, but continue reading. I see that, but I don't know if I if verse twenty four to me. I'm not sure. So if what, what would verse twenty four be to you? I'm, it's it's a confusing verse. I mean, it could go. I mean, I look at it. It could go two ways. You know, I'm leaning towards Marcus' way, where it says, you know, but because it, it's, it's like he was discerning them because he knew their hearts. So it's like I kind of look at it as um, what scripture comes to mind is Second Corinthians seven ten, where it says. Um, godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. You know, so you have people that, um, you know, could hear the word of God. It's like it's like the parable of the sower, you know, where it says, you know, you sow the seeds, some land on these different soils and different grounds. But it's like when tribulation come, you know, in the beginning, it it, it is sprout up. So it will look like it's fruit. But the, the, the cares of the world, which is thorns, will choke it out. You know what I mean? Or, you know, it, it'll, 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 um, you know it'll, it'll, it'll grow and it starts to look like something, but the sun will scorch it and it will wither or, or the, um, the crows would come and take the seed away. So yeah, yeah, you that. understand what I'm saying? So it's like you have those because I've seen it personally. Like I've seen people who, you know, they're. You know, they'll respond to hearing the gospel. It'll be with tears and I'm sorry and, oh, man, I just, you know. 
it'll look all good and then a couple of weeks later it's just right back to the same old lifestyle and and mm-hmm. you never and you never really see fruit and it's not to say that you know if they're saved or not you know yeah. what i mean cuz nobody knows that but as far as looking at fruit you know when i see them again i would preach the gospel again you understand what i'm saying because in my mind i'm like the fruit i don't know what soil it is could it have been the kids of the world that then choked it up and now you have to sow more seeds so you know that's, I see what you're saying so yeah, that's, I get it. that's that's where I'm leaning towards but um like you said it could be you know as you read it I mean it could also mean you know like you know they believed in Christ and you know maybe Christ because it says in 25 and had no need that anyone should testify of man for he knew what was in them no for he knew what was in man so I mean, it could be something where, you know, they believed in Jesus Christ, but Jesus is looking at their hearts and it's more like you guys need to grow more because now you have believers like that. Like mm. you would, you know, you preach the gospel to them, they get saved or even in your walk in the beginning, you know what I mean? And it's like, okay, it takes a, it takes a little bit more, you know? So Christ is looking at their hearts like, okay, you guys are all jumpity and everything because of the signs I'm doing, but... He could see the hearts, and he's exactly. like, okay. and he's looking like, you guys need to grow some more. Like, maybe there's, you know, maybe there's believing faith there, but you guys need to grow some more. Because he could see the hearts. Because I think that's what the main thing about the verses is, is that Jesus can see, he really knows what's going on deep down inside. And True. we don't. So I, think, I get it, I see. I think this is a good um, couple of verses that we should pin. Because I think we're going to come back to it, like, just keep it in the back of your mind. Um, again, this is a feast, right? A whole bunch of people are there. You're in the headquarters. You got the religious leaders. And a lot of signs is happening. People are talking. People mm-hmm. are seeing what's going on. Um, but throughout this book, we're going to see signs. We're going to see um sermons and then we're going to see responses and starting you know in the next chapter we're seeing one of the religious leaders respond even though all of them heard it right but only one response so i think that's what that's alluding to like jesus saw i I know what's in Mm y'all and we already had examples of when he's calling out these guys, oh, an Israelite in which there is no God. Like, he's able to see what's going on inside the heart of men. Exactly. So in this situation, even though there was a lot of signs, and we already know signs, dog. Signs is not, you know? Dog, the children of Israel saw crazy signs. But the people weren't responding in a genuine way, so he didn't commit himself. There was another example where he came to a town. He's like, "Yo, dog, I can't even do nothing over here. Mm. I'm not even gonna perform any miracles over here, cause, tch, y'all, nah, it's not it." What about the dis- what about the disciples that when he started talking about? I think he was like, "I'm the bread of life, or y'all gotta eat my flesh," and they was like, "What?" They was like, "Nah," and they so, broke out. Yeah, so 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 it could have looked, you know, in the beginning it was they probably was right. rolling heavy. Yeah, we disciples, we all out, but it's the scripture says it was a hard saying for them, and they just couldn't accept what he was saying. Whether whatever they thought, he probably they probably was like, all right, he went off the deep end just now, and he's going crazy, and we gotta retreat because he's bugging out now because what he's talking about is on the next level. But you know what I mean? It could be one of them situations because they will they tell you they were rolling with him, but as soon as he hit him with that, they mm. they left him. Yeah. And that's when he goes to his disciples and he's like, Well, y'all gonna leave me too? And then John is like, Where we gonna go? You 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 got the words of life. Mm. So yeah. it was kind of a choice for a lot of disciples that when he started to preach that. that. Listen, man, you see a sign, you gotta deny the sign. People respond to signs, yeah. but are you gonna respond in a real, genuine way? Mm. You know? I mean, you gotta be careful with those signs though, bro. The word tells us that in the end days, there's going to be false prophets and false Christ exactly. throwing signs. So, 
Exactly. Let's be careful if we over here looking for signs instead of the what the word just says by faith. Faith comes by what? Uh, hearing. Damn, why you why you stuttering? You forgot? Nah, he he tired, B. You ain't see, you ain't see he tried to slow down I, a listen, little. Listen, I'm proud of Ange, dog. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he been tired I'm for like pr- twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I peeped it. I, I didn't want to say nothing. <laughs> you been tired for like twenty that, minutes. That mocha, you better out. call up Starbucks. Yo, dog, you better make yeah, it a, a triple. A tri- <laughs> you need a quadruple <laughs> shot. That double <laughs> shot did me dirty. <laughs> that double is lasting you an hour. Dog, mm-hmm. It crash is the crash. <laughs> <Ange>. <laughs> Now, nah, but um, yeah, that's how I see it with with that. Like you said, it's it's a it's a tough it's a tough one, you know. But I'm leaning towards more, I think Marcus's way, but Ange definitely, you know, it could be. It, like like I said, the main part of that scripture is that Jesus could see the hearts. Yeah, I get it. So whether they believed, so trust them. Whether they believed all the way. And um, he just was like, ah, right, you guys, y'all need more. Or like what Marcus was saying, um, you know, they, but Jesus did not commit himself to them because he, at the end of the day, he knew. He was like, man, y'all not real. Like, y'all just going off of the signs. Mm. You and, know what I mean? And the reason, because we have, we have examples where Jesus commit himself. Where he was like, all right, I'm going to chill here for two days with y'all. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it, it that's why I say, yo, let's pin this one and then kind of yeah. see, yeah. all okay. right, to be continued. How this, how this works out. But yeah, man, this this was actually pretty dope. I think it's because it was a short chapter and Ange is um. Ange actually. So what are we gonna you, say? You, twenty? I mean, twenty five verses. I think twenty five verses. I think twenty five verses is the is. The, <laughs> we might have to lock it up after <laughs> the first twenty five. <laughs> So when we get to them chapters Yo. that see 40 and 45, we might have to yeah, break that down in two. Break it down for 25 is the limit? <laughs> I think so. Jeez. Yo. His stamina going to grow in time, bro. It takes time. It takes time, man. It takes time. There's so but much I, in this so, word, man. So who who going to say goodbye to the people, man? Whoever's, you know what? Whoever's listening. Um, what, let's I, let's I, have uh, closing. Um, You know, we usually do the closing. Go ahead. Um, new segment. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell this is this is nothing about this is produced. <laughs> yeah. We have no script. While these dudes are busy laughing, I'll I'll tell Go you ahead. my little thing. Go I just ahead. the big thing for me, man, is just serving faith. You know, just the servants which were privy to the uh, to the miracle, the behind the scenes. And they did not get any credit, man. And even that one servant that went to bring, you know, the cup, which in that servant's mind was just water. Like, just he could have lost his job. He could have been humiliated. But he was obedient. And as servants, that's what we sh- we should strive for, is to just be obedient to the Lord and let him, uh, let him get all the glory, man. So that's what I see here. Um... So I'll, uh, since you took the first part, I'll take the second part. Um, just his zeal for the house of God. Mm. You know, Jesus, um, when he came in and he saw the racket, he did something about it. You know, and a lot of times people, you know, they'll call you over-righteous. They'll be like, you're going too hard. Mm. You know, why are you getting so angry about things when you see injustice or when you see unrighteousness or when you see whatever? You know, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's righteousness, you know, and, um, you know, you think about Christ's kingdom when he comes, it's going to be a kingdom of righteousness. So if you're not, if you're not, if you don't hunger after righteousness, I think that's one of the Beatitudes. Um, Blessed are those who hunger after righteousness for they will be filled. Mm. You know, so if you're, you, you know, you're living in this world and you're not hungering and you don't have a hunger for righteousness. I mean, we're flesh and blood. You know, we're sinners. We're going to fall. You know, our flesh, our eyes are attracted to certain things. That's just our nature. But, you know, we we have the spirit of God in us. We have the Holy Spirit in us. So, you know, you should have, you know, you should be having moments of just hungering for righteousness and wanting to see righteousness and you see how it got, to, you know, Christ came in there with the whip <laughs> and he cleaned. Hey, that whip was fresh. <laughs> Yo, Doug, I think about just, you know, you think about a kung fu movie or you think, 
<laughs> you think you remember the old cheesy Chuck Norris movies or the whatever movies and they come in and they clean house? You clean know when house, you clean all you see house? Is, all you see is dust. <laughs> it's dust kicking up. Word up. Like Jesus cleaned house and um nah, just definitely. And also something with the beginning where um the water, you know, where he turned water into wine. And then you know in the scriptures water represents the word of God. Mm. You know, and it's just it's just something that I was like when I was sitting there and I was looking at it, I'm like, you know, he told them to fill the pots with water and he turned it into wine. And, you know, wine represents, you know, the joy of the Lord and the water represents the word of the Lord. So it's like you fill yourself up with the water, which is the word, you know, Christ can turn it into wine. He could turn it into joy and and he and distribute it. You know, you you have believers that's just always angry, always mad. I mean, I <laughs> sometimes I go through that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just, and that's just, and I think it's just because of the zeal for righteousness. You know, just being in this world, looking at this world, and sometimes you just get fed up with everything around you, just about just how life goes. And you just like, oh man, why can't just the kingdom of God come already in? You just want righteousness to reign because, you know, it's always going to be good. But, you know, if you're constantly filling yourself with the water of the word, you know, Christ can distribute that joy through you. You know, mm -hmm. he could turn that into joy. And, you know, no matter, um, no matter what's going on, you know, you could be um, you could be filled with joy and also bring joy to others. Amen. You know, and my encouragement is, you know, whoever's out there listening, um, I'm glad that you spend this time with us, but my encouragement is for you to get a Bible, open it up to the Gospel of John and read it for yourself. Read it alone. Sit down and spend time with God, mm -hmm. reading it yourself. Um, listen, don't go off what we're saying. Discover it for yourself. Discover these jewels for yourself. Um, build that real personal intimate relationship with jesus christ with yourself we're up to chapter two we just finished chapter two you know get a bible read chapter one and two spend time in your alone time and prayer that's my encouragement and chapter three is gonna be big so y'all want to tune in mm. to the next episode of no in <laughs> yeah how many verses how many verses in chapter oh and you lucky oh we got 30 but chapter three is good though. Oh, yeah, chapter three is the big the big John three sixteen in chapter three. That's mm. a famous Oh, so that means we might stay there for yeah, and she might I think we might get we might not get past sixteen. We have to split it. I think it we up. have to split it <laughs> <laughs> between sixteen and six and, and, and uh, fourteen, dog. Yo, let the Lord lead, bro. Let the Lord lead. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds All right. Good. Say bye to the people. Later, peeps. Thank you, Father God, for just allowing us once again to just come together and open up your word. Lord, we are just fortunate, Lord, that you reveal um, who you are. You, re you um, reveal your glory to us through your word. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you for preserving your word um, all throughout time, Lord, and just um, keeping it, Lord, that we in this time may read it, may open it up. Um, and just discover who you are, Lord. Discover your nature. See how good you are, how merciful you are, how compassionate you are, um, Jesus. You are um, everything we would ever want to be um, as men, Lord, and just as people, Lord. Um, we just thank you for all the examples you've left um, in your word, Lord. So we just pray, Lord, that that this um, that this study, Lord, just goes out to the world, Lord, that Whoever may be hearing it, Lord, may be blessed, Lord, may be encouraged, Lord, to pick up your word, Lord, and read it for themselves, Lord, and not go off of anything that we said or anything that we're saying, Lord, but may be convinced in their own mind, Lord, that you are that you are um, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that you are Jesus, that you are God, you're the Messiah, Lord, you're the one that was uh, prophesied about from very old, Lord, that would come and... um take away the sin of the world lord and that would save men lord so again lord we just thank you for just allowing us lord to just be servants 
Lord, and, and also just students um, of you. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen.